my name is Mary D and welcome to my YouTube channel Mary D plays in this video I'll be um, doing level one course for electric guitar uh, rock path uh, on the Fender play app for the desktop computer um, last time I had done these lessons was back in uh, December of 2020 and since then uh, Fender play has updated the courses um, so, um, I've decided to re redo, I'm going to redo level one, mainly because they have made some changes to, to the core, what the courses are. And I was in the middle of taking or doing the level one course and it'd just be easier just to do it all over again and be done with it. All right. So I'm going to do course one and, uh, course two today. Um, course one is just a video. At least in the past it's been a video. Um, and then course two you get into the basics. I'm Tim, one of your instructors here at Fender Play. Starting with its explosive birth in the 1950s, rock music has always been a style synonymous with the guitar. By the time you get comfortable with your power chords and some basic scales, you won't want to put your guitar down. In level one of the rock path, we'll cover the basics of getting started. You'll learn how to hold your guitar, how to tune, and the names of the strings on the guitar. If you're already familiar with those basics, feel free to jump past those courses, mark them as complete, and move on. From there, we'll teach you your first chords, which will be the G, C, and D chords, and demonstrate basic strumming techniques. Remember, this is a step-by-step -step process. Take your time, but feel free to skip ahead or repeat courses as needed. As you follow the path, keep in mind that you can learn the songs and skills on either acoustic or electric guitar. We feature lessons taught on both, but whatever you have in your hands will work fine. You may get sore fingertips, but that's okay. You'll build up your calluses the more you play. And remember, practice makes progress. Even just a few minutes a day will make a difference. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Let's get started. Let's get familiar with your new instrument. I'm gonna show you the parts of your electric guitar. Your guitar has three parts, the body, neck, and headstock. On the body of your guitar, we have our bridge, and these are the string saddles where the strings pass through the bridge. Let's take a look at our pickups right here. These are electronics that sense the vibration of the strings and convert it into an electrical signal. This switch here is the pickup selector. We also have knobs that control volume and tone. Depending on the model of the guitar you have, this entire configuration might vary. We also have strap buttons. Those are here and here. This is where you can attach your guitar strap. Also, we have the output jack here on the bottom. This is where you can connect your instrument cable. Now let's look at the parts of the neck. We have the frets. These are the metal strips that are stamped into the neck. Also, the fretboard, which is the surface of the neck where we press down on the strings. Usually, electric guitars have some dots or decorative shapes that are called fret markers. Sometimes they're called inlays as well. They help us find our place on the neck quicker and more accurately. These are placed at frets 3, 5, 7, 9, and 12, and then this pattern repeats up the neck. All right, let's talk about the nut. That's this thing right here. This is where the strings pass through to attach to the headstock. So notice how there's a notch cut out for each string. Now this is not a fret, so you wanna make sure not to mistake it for one. All right, so this is the headstock right here. These are the tuning pegs that are attached to the headstock. 
Now our strings are wound around the tuning pegs, and when tuning the guitar, you'll adjust these tuning pegs that'll either tighten or loosen the strings. Now your guitar may also be equipped with a string tree. That's this thing right here. Sometimes there's also two of them. These help with securing some of the strings even further. And there you have it, now you know the parts of the guitar. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to comfortably hold the electric guitar in a seated position, and then also how to hold a guitar pick. So let's talk about how to hold your guitar with good posture. First, you're going to want to sit up straight at the edge of your chair, feet planted firmly on the floor. You want to be sure that you're in a good chair or couch in this case. That's ideally without arms so that you can move your guitar around without bumping it. All right, so you want to place your guitar on your thigh right where it meets the hip, Hug it in close to the body, drape your arm over the top. This is gonna help support the instrument. All right, it's very important here when you're playing guitar, you wanna make sure you're comfortable. So make sure and straighten up your posture whenever you catch yourself slouching. So now that you're holding the guitar body correctly, let's get the guitar neck in alignment. First, angle the guitar neck out away from you, just about 30 degrees. Now you want to make sure the headstock is a little higher than parallel to the ground and that your elbow is below your wrist, but not resting on your leg. This is going to help you play with a straight wrist. Now let's look at how to hold a guitar pick. You want to make sure and hold the pick with your thumb and index finger. You can think of the pick as an extension of your index finger. Hold your fingers fairly close to the tip, but not too far back. Be sure that the tip is pointing straight in line with your index finger and that your thumb crosses it like a T. Hold the pick firmly, but allow it to move or flex just a little bit when you pick notes or strum chords. Make sure and keep your wrist nice and loose, but with pressure on the strings so the pick doesn't flop around too much. If you occasionally drop the pick, don't be discouraged. Just pick it up, keep playing. There you have it. Now you know how to hold your guitar and pick, and furthermore, you've got some tips for playing with excellent form. Time to start strumming. Okay, let you know I live in an apartment building, so if you heard a woman's voice, it was my neighbor. Um, she has a dog, so I, she came home, I remember hearing a little barking. Not much I can do. What I'm doing here is, <coughs> excuse me, I have allergies, so if you hear me coughing, I don't have a cold, it's just allergies, post-nasal drip. Anyways, um, what I'm doing here is open up a new window. I noticed there's uh, a tab that's kind of long. I like to load the tabs in a full window, see a full screen. Makes it easier to see. Let's learn the numbers. All right. Now, here's it. Sometimes what happens with Fender, it goes green screen on me. We have to sometimes load it, or it will just flicker the green screen constantly. And occasionally, I might have to uh, close down the browser and, and Reload it again. Number and letter note names of each string. If you learn these now, it'll help you memorize the...
Let's yeah, learn the right, number and letter again. note names of each string. If you learn these now, it'll help you memorize the chords and single notes a lot more easily. Your guitar has six strings in each out string. Let's learn the number right. and letter note names of each string. If you learn these now, it'll help you memorize the chords and single notes a lot more easily. Your guitar has six strings and each string has a string number. Let's start with our first string. This is string one. String one is the highest sounding string and it's also the skinniest. Next we have two, three, four, five, and last six. So six is the lowest sounding string and it's also our thickest string. So you'll notice as we go from string one to string six, the pitch gets lower each time. So let's hear that again. We've got string one, String two, string three, string four, string five, and last string six. Now, each string also has a designated letter or note name. Let's start with our first string again. So our first string is gonna be an E, Our second string is going to be a B. Our third string is a G. Our fourth string is a D. Our fifth string is an A. And our sixth string is an E. So we have a rhyme to remember all of these names. It goes Easter bunnies get dizzy at Easter. You'll notice that we have two E strings. And we differentiate that with a high E and a low E. So one is our high E and six is our low E. Do your best to memorize the numbers and the names of the strings as you learn and have fun practicing. I'm going to watch that again, and then I'm going to move over to the tab. Let's learn the number and letter note names of each string. If you learn these now, it'll help you memorize the chords and single notes a lot more easily. Your guitar has six strings, and each string has a string number. Let's start with our first string. This is string one. String one is the highest sounding string, and it's also the skinniest. Next we have two, three, four, five, and last six. So six is the lowest sounding string and it's also our thickest string. So you'll notice as we go from string one to string six, the pitch gets lower each time. Lower each so let's time. hear that again. So We've got that string again. one, string two, string three, string four, string five, and last string six. also has a designated letter or note name. Let's start with our first string again. So our first string is going to be an E. Our second string is going to be a B. Our third string is a G. Our fourth string is a D. Our fifth string is an A. Our sixth string is an E. So we have a rhyme to remember all of these names. It goes Easter bunnies get dizzy at Easter. You'll notice that we have two E strings, and we differentiate that with a high E 
and a low E. So one is our high E, and six is our low E. Do your best to memorize the numbers and the names of the strings as you learn, and have fun practicing. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the amplifier, why we use it, how to plug in gear into our amp, and also we'll talk about effects and what the knobs do. When playing the electric guitar, your amp is equally as important to your sound as your guitar is. You'll notice you can't hear any sound or signal without it. See? Besides amplifying your guitar, your amp is capable of many sounds and tone possibilities. To plug in your guitar, you're going to need an instrument cable. On your guitar, you have an output jack. On the amp, you have an input jack. You're going to want to take one end of the instrument cable, plug it into your guitar's output jack, and then take the other end of the instrument cable and plug it into your amp's input jack. You want to make sure your amp is off while you do this. On your guitar, you want to make sure the knobs are turned all the way up to 10, and your amp's volume is turned all the way to zero. Turn your amp on, and slowly turn up the volume on your amp. Now you have sound and signal. If you've got a pedal, you're going to need two instrument cables and either a 9-volt battery or a power source that you can plug into your pedal. You want to take your first instrument cable and take one end and plug it into your guitar's output jack. And take the other end, plug it into your pedal's input jack. For your second instrument cable, you want to take one end, plug it into the pedal's output jack, take the other end, and it's going into the amp's input jack. Make sure the amp is off and the volume is down while you do this, and then you want to turn on your pedal from there and turn on your amp. Now most pedals will have a light that shows that the pedal is powered on. Then you turn your volume up on the amp and you're good to go. Your amp is important to developing your sound. Plug in and play often, but save those ears and keep the volume down, depending on who's around. See you next time. Let's talk about tuning. So why tune your guitar? Number one, your guitar is made of wood, so it's susceptible to changes in temperature and humidity. Also, your tuning pegs can just get knocked out of place. But most importantly, you can't play a song correctly unless you're in tune. Your guitar has six strings, and each string has a designated number. This is the first string. Second string. Third string. Fourth string. Fifth. And sixth string. Each one of your guitar strings is attached to a tuning peg. To find out which string is attached to which peg, just follow the string to see where it ends. I'm playing an electric guitar today, and all of the tuners are on one side of the headstock. On most acoustic guitars, you'll have three on each side. Besides the numbers of the strings, each string has a designated pitch or sound, and it gets a letter name. So let's learn the letter names of the strings. The first string is the E string. Second string is the E. So E, B, G, E, A, and E. We go from the highest pitch string, the high E string, to the lowest pitch string, the low E string. Two E strings. The high E string is wound the most tightly, and the low E string is wound the most loosely. Another way to help you memorize the string names is a silly sentence like, Easter bunnies get dizzy at Easter. 
So let's get ready to tune. We're gonna use the Fender Tune app today. I'm gonna start by plucking the low E string of my guitar and checking the pitch. A little out of tune there, so what I'm gonna do to tighten the string, you've gotta turn the tuner away from you like this. That sounds good. Now I'm gonna check the A string. The A string's a little bit too tight, so I'm gonna turn the tuner towards me like this. It looks like it was about in tune, but I wanna go below pitch, loosen it a little too much on purpose. And tune it up to the note so that it holds better. Let's check the D string now. The D string is flat or too loose, so I'm also going to tighten up into that note. There we go. It's always a good idea to have the note sustaining while you're tuning so that you see the change in pitch, but you also hear the change in pitch. And you'll repeat the process on the next three strings. We're showing you one way to tune. Others include the Fender Online Tuner, the Fender Clip-On or Pedal Tuner, and some guitars even feature a built-in tuner. And as you progress, you'll even be able to tune by ear. See you next time. Curiosity, am I into the next level? Or not level, I mean next course. Okay, so the exercise pick a string is the last course. See you next time. I'll wait till the ambulance pass. I live close to the fire department. Okay, I want to copy this into a separate browser. It makes it easier to see the screen. It got chopped off. I need each string descending and ascending. Hmm. Let's get more for. Oh, hold on. Let me refresh this. Occasionally, the Fender Play, it does a screen screen, and you have to reload. If you don't uh, reload it, it will constantly flicker a green screen. Familiar with your guitar string as while developing your let's get more familiar with your guitar string as while developing your strum hand technique. Remember, your strings are identified by numbers one through six, high E to low E, and by their letter names E, B, G, D, A, and E. 
If it helps, recall, Easter bunnies get dizzy at Easter. Let's practice picking each string while calling out the note names. We're going to go ahead and do this in descending order. We're going to say it and play it starting with the high E string. Let's hit each one four times. We'll go E, 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 E. Then to our B string, our second string, B, 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 B. To our G string, our third string, G, 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 G. Now for our D string, D, 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 D. With two more strings to go, we're going to take it to our A string, also known as our fifth string, A, 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 A. And all the way to our low E string. Try that with me. We've got E, E, E. Now let's say it and play it again in ascending order. So we're going to start where we ended at our low E string. Here it comes. We have E, 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 E. Take it to the A. A, 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 A. Now D, 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 D. To your G string. G, 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 G. Two more strings to go. We have B, 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 and then back to your high E string, your first string. E, 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 E. Now let's go descending and descending, but just pick each string twice. So we'll start with our high E string. Here it comes. You have E, E, now B, B, followed by G, G. D, D, your A, and your E twice. Now we're going to go ahead and take it ascending, starting from the low E string. Here it comes. You have E, E, A, A, D, D, G, G, B, B, all the way to your high E string twice. Now, playing each string individually will really help you get more comfortable with this instrument. Okay. I'm going to uh, play it again. Let's get more familiar with your guitar strings while developing your strum hand technique. Remember, your strings are identified by numbers 1 through 6, high E to low E, and by their letter names E, B, G, D, A, and E. If it helps, recall, Easter bunnies get dizzy at Easter. Let's practice picking each string while calling out the note names. We're going to go ahead and do this in descending order. We're going to say it and play it starting with the high E string. Let's hit each one four times. We'll go E, 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 E. Then to our B string, our second string, B, 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 B. To our G string, our third string, G, 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 G. G. Now for our D string, D, 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 D. With two more strings to go, we're going to take it to our A string, also known as our fifth string, A, A. low E string. Try that with me. We've got E, 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 E. Now let's say it and play it again in ascending order. So we're going to start where we ended at our low E string. Here it comes. We have E, 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 E. Take it to the A. A, 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 A. Now D, D, D. string G G G G two more strings to go we have B B B B B back to your high E string your first string E E E E now let's go descending and descending but just pick each string twice so we'll start with our high E string here it comes you have E E Now we're 
gonna go ahead and take an ascending starting from the low E string. Here it comes. You have E, E, A, A, D, D, G, G, B, B, all the way to your high E string twice. Now playing each string individually will really help you get more comfortable with this instrument.